Hello and welcome to Pricing College with your hosts, Aidan Campbell and Joanna Wells. In today's episode, we want to talk about something that, that is often, I suppose, overlooked and certainly at the beginning of a pricing project, but it is one of the probably the more laborious te- uh, tasks that you really need to build in a corporation before you can really start putting in place improvements, optimizations, and those sort of things. And that is making sure that your data, uh, the data in the company, whether that's sales data from an ERP system, whatever it is, that is clean, it's usable, it's excellent, uh, that the business intelligence really has the tools or the, the data available for work to start. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of you probably have heard of the term business intelligence. It's it's become quite widespread now in across a number of industries and firms. Yeah, and you know, executives and pricing teams are becoming very interested in business intelligence. But why? Because it informs pricing. It informs business strategy. Um, it informs your response to competitor uh, prices. If the competitor drops price, you want to know about it. Um, I suppose that's that's the reason it's become quite important. It's also become important for improving price setting as well. So there's a number of benefits to um, understanding a bit more about price, price uh, business intelligence and its impact on pricing and vice versa. You know, nowadays, I think sometimes we feel like we're being overwhelmed by the amount of data that is available. Um, it's been captured by so many devices, especially now with more technology appearing, trucks are recording stuff, you know, delivery times, you know, anything like this. But in many corporations, even very famous corporations, they still utilize quite old fashioned and unwieldy data systems, business systems that make it almost impossible to slice and dice the data to download, to use, to utilize, to to manipulate, to, to really get into that data and see what it means to analyze it. And when you're thinking about something like dynamic pricing, where pricing change, could be multiple times a day, could be even every every second, really, you know, I, I've seen companies for downloading data, can, it can take them a week just to get a spreadsheet of data into Excel. And you're thinking, if that's, if that's a scenario we're starting from, let's not even discuss dynamic pricing. You know, let's not even... We're kidding ourselves. You, you, you're going to go nowhere with this. So really, it's the fundamental building blocks. It's like you've got to get the data clean. The old saying, and you, you hear it so many times, junk in, junk out. Um, I'll be honest, sometimes we can't even get junk into systems, let alone get it out. So, you know, really have, you have to have a real cold hard look at where, you, where you're starting from. And, and when you realize that, you know, you've got to play the ball from where it lies. And that's, that's where you start from. And then I suppose there's that more old, uh, internal uh, business focused view of business intelligence and what that is. And fundamentally, a lot of business, uh, that's really their own cost base. Um, and it's all focused on uh, their profitability, uh, things like that. It's not very customer focused. It's not really market focused. It doesn't tell you much other than that. Um, so it's just really providing, if you can get good and clean data out of the system, it's just providing you with one cost input into the pricing model, which is still very important to have, especially when calculating your price flaws, but not necessarily um, the input that you need to generate um, uh, you know, greater price premiums from your products. You need to look more broadly um, in terms of the market you need to look at what you, even what your competitors are doing and when I say that you know there's a lot of um, you know pricing teams out there who have built some really good competitive um, uh, intelligence systems just to extend upon their knowledge of the business intelligence systems and a lot of these are like are literally homemade they've done it themselves just to, to you know get, get a clearer sense of the market but Still, a a lot of them are are just giving them data on the competitor price points, you know, web scraping, things like that. And um, from there, they've really just gone, oh, you know, we're going to do competitive pricing. Where are we going to fit slightly above or below um, our our competitors, um, rather than really looking at, you know, the value differential that they offer, the, the, you know, us versus them, why why are customers willing to spend more with our uh, competitors versus us, and asking those sort of questions. The, the competitor intelligence system doesn't really, you know, address that, looking, we call that, you know, the value differential between you and your competitors. So, 
I suppose in all of this, when you think about business intelligence, and this is what the, the new version of business intelligence really is, it's looking at multiple inputs um, uh, and then getting that together in a sort of a data template. So then you can utilize those inputs to really understand what your customers um, are, are willing to pay uh, within your price setting process and then tweaking it, other, otherwise known as optim optimization, optimizing prices uh, correctly via different segments. So you know that the price prices that you're setting are reliable and you can be confident in them. It's not just simply cost-based pricing. You know, I think we, we, we covered some of these topics what I'm about to cover, we covered it in a previous episode about what a CEO should know about pricing. One of the things I'll say about data, you know, in a company, is your company a data-driven business? Is it run by hunches and just, you know, experience and gut feels? Is, is that how sales and marketing is really working? Or is there data provided? You know, is it a value culture where at senior executive meetings, business meetings, leadership meetings, the numbers are being discussed, there's evidence, or is it purely our sales went up because it rained more this month. You know, these sort of things, which to some extent we, we see them at every company. And yeah, of course, sometimes rain can really influence and the weather can influence sales. Of course it can, but not. it can't always be used every month and it can't be used in that regard. So if the data is not there, one thing I'll say, is that often the CEO and the senior executives, they're so far removed from data, data manipulation, digging through spreadsheets, sitting there late at night trying to rectify numbers, reconcile numbers, trying to make it all add up. You know, they're so far removed from it, from it, they don't even see the value in it to some extent. They don't see the value in it, uh, in investing in it, in getting a new system. One, of the, one other thing I'd say about this, for, and I've seen this many times in corporations, big IT departments have invested years and years over time in building in-house systems, big, big uh, proprietary systems, systems that are supposedly tailored to their business. In many instances, they're just completely useless. They're com completely junk. But there's, a, there's the fixed cost fallacy whereby they've spent so much money on them and there could be a SaaS service available, well, you know, straight out of the box, develop the experts, list it on the NASDAQ, all that sort of stuff. And they can make one and you can rent it for, you know, whatever, a couple of hundred bucks a month. But there's all, often a great reluctance to move towards these things. And the, 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 the problem with the existing system, it keeps rolling on and rolling on and there's more money spent on it, more patches. It never gets rectified, never gets fixed. But it's sitting on the balance sheet in the corporation. It's sitting there as a multi-million dollar asset in the business. And fundamentally, if you want to get rid of that system, you've got to write it off as a, you know, as a, as a loss because you're, you're recognizing it's not actually an asset anymore. It's, it's worthless. It's, in many instances, it's even a liability. So that's one of the reasons why I think these things happen. So you hear about first mover advantage. I think in many instances, in many companies nowadays, there's second mover advantage. You know, if you're last off the blocks, you could be, you could be ahead in the game. Yeah, so, so I suppose, you know, you really do, if you want to get your pricing aligned to the market and you want to achieve, you know, business goals and you've got metrics in place and you've got targets to to hit, that, that all makes sense. What you do need behind that is a business intelligence system that's aligned to your pricing, that's aligned to marketing and sales efforts. You know, having old school sort of metrics in place or inputs that are running into old archaic systems and flowing out is basically rubbish. And then you're using, rubbing your head thinking, how can I use this in terms of price analysis, knowing full well that most of it's, it's junk. That's not really going to serve you well or, or even give you give, help you when, you know, your executive or your, your boss or the CEO asks you, is this price correct? Fundamentally, you'll know deep down it's not, and so will they. So the, the, the business case for great data, a great business intelligence system that's aligned to your market and industry um, and pricing is, is, is very strong, but it has to be done in terms of the so what for executives so they can really understand how it will really drive the ROI on pricing and you know the whole IT capability um, discussion because you know, a number of business, uh, businesses at the moment are going through major IT transformations, especially uh, with, you know, digital uh, becoming more popular, uh, both in terms of a channel to market and people preferring to buy online and preferring the pricing that's offered. So all of these, these 
themes are very critical to the back end of all of that, which is, you know, what inputs are you going to use to set your prices? Um, and, and this is the business intelligence discussion. So look, if you want to know a little bit more about uh, business intelligence and if you've got it right, what's happening in other industries, then feel free to you know, download um, some free guides and reports from our website at taylorwells.com.au. We've also got some useful information on the homepage about uh, pricing technology as well. Yeah, yeah, that's it from me today. So have a great day. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bye.